Hello you all and welcome to Code Life. Today we will continue learning about Lightning Web Components composition, but this time how can we communicate between components using events and also with the Lightning Message Service. My name is Julian Duca, I'm a principal developer advocate here at Salesforce and as always I am super happy to be here with you all. Thank you very much for all of those that are in the chat right now interacting with me. I see a lot of familiar names. Thank you for always joining this stream. You are the ones that make this possible. Also, all the great feedback is always welcome. Mary, you gave me a great idea to create content about Heroku and Heroku Connect. We will be seeing that in the future. I will be going to my uh, content calendar and start preparing for those topics. Stay tuned because let me share my screen. Stay tuned because next week we will have Alba Rivas talking about GraphQL for Salesforce developers. I don't want to get into her topic, but she has a lot of great things to cover, including the LWC wired adapter for GraphQL that is currently in pilot. And I am preparing a series of three different code lives when we are going to refactor a Salesforce API and migrate that API to MuleSoft. We will learn how to design an API in MuleSoft, how to implement it, and how to integrate that API with our Salesforce application. So stay tuned. In the coming weeks, we will be uh, learning about MuleSoft. Also, remember to click here on the notify me so you get a notification every time we go live or when this specific episode gets live as well. You can check on our developer portal, our recent blog post, recent events, podcasts and videos. Stay tuned. All the information that we are creating for you all is here and also access to all the different documentation centers and APIs documentation are here. We have been working on multiple projects. I've been pushing the code to this uh, GitHub repository. It is under my personal repository on slash Julian Duque slash code life examples. Here you can find like the different episodes we have been covering. Uh, the last one, it's the LWC composition. Uh, here I pushed the code we saw on the last week and we will continue working on this one for this episode. Uh, I still have these uh, composed components that we worked before and I will start implementing events to communicate from children to parent. Okay, with that, let me close things that I don't need. And let's get this uh, started. So what we have, what we have is, let me refresh, the application we created last week. I changed the images instead of cars, and, 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 and I will show you why later. Instead of cars, I have images from nature. So the first image is Northern Lights, Second image is nature, like a misty field. And the third image, uh, we have mountains. I'm using the same um, components that I created before. I'm using the gallery item. I'm using the gallery that has the controls. Uh, I have the paginator as well. And I can call those events from other components because I'm exposing this API. Right now, we know that in order to pass data to a component, we pass it from the parent to the child through properties. Let's go to the code and take a look at what that means. I have the gallery component and the gallery item component. I am passing data using the properties. In this case, the title for the gallery. And for the gallery item, I have title, the alt message, and the source, which is the URL that has the image. 
if I take a look at the source code of those components, I am defining APIs. Those APIs are the properties that are going to let me pass data from parent to child. I have both APIs on the gallery and on the gallery item. I changed these components a little bit to, to, to show what we are going to be doing today. What if I want to pass data or communicate state changes from the children to the parent? The only way I have to do so is through events. We are going to be using DOM events, like standard DOM events that are available in JavaScript in the browser to send data or state from the children to the parent. And since Lightning Web Components use something called the shadow root, they have its own DOM context per component, we will learn how those events can uh, pretty much uh, propagate between or across those uh, shadow boundaries as well. Please, if you have any question, I monitor in the chat. When I'm taking a look at this side, I am taking a look at the chat and I can see what you are asking. So thank you very much for joining. Uh, hello, Alexander. I'm happy also to see you too here. Good evening, Vijay, as well. Cool. So let's start. From our component, and, and normally the events are something that happen when an action is triggered. When I am triggering an action, a component, uh, sorry, an event gets triggered. For example, these buttons, I am performing a click event. I am clicking the button and something is happening. When I go to the component definition, this is in the in the gallery component we have the on click i am listening for the click event and i am attaching uh, a, a function in my component to react to that event so do you know this we have been working with this but how can i create a custom event and submit the event back to the parent Right now, we know that we have a pagination that is embed in this gallery component. But remember that the same way we are exposing an API so I can externally control that pagination, I might want to have also access to the pagination data but, but how can I have access to those, uh, those fields? It's going to be through events, okay? So let's start learning how to create an event and propagate an event or a trigger an event from a child component. Let's go to the gallery. Uh, in this case, uh, the gallery is the one that has the two actions next and previous. I want to create a custom event that will be triggered every time I click on next and every time I click on previous. That will give the implementer or the person that is using the component a way to add any action or to listen for any anything that is happening on that specific action. So I'm giving this consumer the way to listen for that specific event and perform the action that they require. How can we do this? First, we will need to define or specify an event. So I'm going to specify the previous event. And this event is an instance of the custom event class. Then I will need to specify an event name. In this case, the event name is going to be previous or pref. The event names need to be lowercase 
And if you are going to separate uh, separate words, use underscore. But the standard or the recommendation is to keep always lowercase names. And then after I create that event, I am going to dispatch it. So my component has this dispatch event method that will be executing this event. And if any component is listening for that, for that specific event, I will be able to perform an action. We will do the same for next. Let's create a custom event for next. Next event. This is a custom event. And right now we are taking a look at the very basics. This is the custom event for next. And let me dispatch it. Next event. Great. Let me see. I have Copilot disabled. Perfect. Good. Now that I am uh, dispatching those events or triggering those events, I will be able to listen to those events on the parent of the component. What is the parent of this component? This gallery component, in our case, is app.html. App.html or the app component is the one that can listen for that specific event. So let me attach those events here. How can I attach those events, for example, to this lining tab, which is the exact parent of my gallery component? I can use the on and the name of the event. So it's going to be on prev and on next. Those are going to be the listeners and I will need to map them to methods on my app component. This is handle on prev and handle on next. So now I will need to implement those uh, previous and next handlers in my application. So let's go to the application controller, handle on prev, and I have an event here, and let's print the event that I'm getting. And I have handle on next, and let's do the same. Let's print that event. So we can take a look at the type of object we are receiving and what information we can get from those events. Now that I updated this, let me deploy to my scratch org my changes and let's execute it to see how it works. Perfect. I'm going to switch right now to full screen so we have better visibility. And later I can come back on camera. Okay. I deploy the components. It seems there is no error. And let's go again to my application, refresh. And let's take a look at the console. Here in the console, we are going to get that event object that we will be triggering every time we click on next or previous. So let's clear this and I click on next and nothing is happening. Previous, nothing is happening. So here we have one 
lesson is that the event is not being propagated back to the parent. Even though I'm listening for that event and I am triggering the event, uh, the event here in the gallery, I cannot listen for that event because it is going away from the DOM boundary. So what I will need to do is to bubble up that event. I will need to specify the property to say, okay, you can go and bubble up. So you can go bubble up so I can listen in for that event on my lining tab, this component that I have here. And oh, it's handle on prev, handle on next. Let me see that I don't have any typo. Handle on prev, handle on next. Perfect, I had a typo. Okay, let me redeploy. Now I'm bubbling. Yeah, now the father is the one that needs to handle that event. It is receiving that, that event. Because I am going out of the, pretty much I'm going out of the dome if I am listening here on the father, right? I am going out from my dome. If I am in my dome, in my shadow root, I will be able to listen to those events. So let me refresh. Now that I am bubbling, so the event is going a little bit up over my boundary. Now you can see that I'm getting the custom events. And the property of that custom event is that it is bubbling. Right? But since I am not part of the same DOM, I am outside of my DOM, of my shadow root, because the limit of my component breaks when I'm going out, I don't have any target. So I cannot access the element that is executing this event. I know the type of the event, but I cannot access that element. But what if I move these handlers to my component, the component that is pretty much triggering those events? I will be able to remove the bubbling. You see, next is not being bubbled. Previous is being bubbled in this case. This is one, this is why we were only getting the results while hitting the previous. Now let me de redeploy this and we will see what happens. Now that I am listening for those events in the component that owns those events or the component that is part of that shadow root. Let me load. I will clean up the console. Now I execute Previous, previous bubbles up, so I can listen in to it on a parent component. And next, it doesn't bubbles. And for some reason, I'm not getting the target of the component, the component that is, uh, that is triggering the event. Okay. How can we submit or send data from an event to the component that is listening the event? So now what I want to do is create an event. Let's call it on update. 
that will submit both the current item position and the total items. So I can extend or pretty much distribute the state of the paginator. So let me create an update event. This is going to be a custom event. Custom event. This is called update. And now I will specify that this needs to bubbles, needs to go up. And I can submit a detail. Detail is a property that will contain data. So I will be able to submit data back to the component that is listening for this event. This data here needs to be primitives, needs to be basic data. So I can easily send the current item So I'm sending the current item and the total items so I can have that information. Total items, these total items. So every time I update the event with this update current item uh, method, Every time it is being executed, I am going to emit an event. And that event will have the state of the navigator. In case I want to use my own navigator instead, the uh, sorry, my own paginator instead of the paginator that the gallery component has. This is why I added this new uh, method here, show pagination, so I can enable or disable the pagination that I have. And let me specify my own pagination. So this is my own pagination. This is the external pagination. And I have the current item of total items. So I can give it my own design. I can change it the way I want. But I need to get this data. So I'm attaching to the parent. Remember that now this is going to happen to the parent. On update, I will handle an update. On the handle update here, I can have a method, handle update, that receives the event. And I can define the two properties that I created, current item and total items. And I then get that data from the detail. So I have the detail and that detail property is giving me the current item and that detail, detail property is giving me the total items. Detail total items. Let me deploy and see if I have my custom pagination. Well, while this deploy, what I want to do next is the following. Remember that right now we are adding the gallery items directly to my gallery component. But somebody mentioned that it would be a good way to have like maybe a custom object with the item data. And then I can use a for each to iterate over those items instead of adding all of the items at, at the same time. 
I will be able to get those and iterate and, and it will be more dynamic. So I did that. I created a cars controller. I created a custom object, but something happened. And let me show you this first, and then we will see the problem I faced and how I fix it with events. So now let me take a look at the paginator that I just created. So I have now an external paginator here. So every time I trigger the event, I am getting the data. Why? Because I am emitting that unupdate event. I'm emitting that update event and I'm listening for that update event and I am getting that data from the children, from the child component. So remember, I pass data from the parent to the child through properties. I pass data from the children to the parent through events. Hey, Santanu. Uh, don't worry, don't worry, you can uh, take a look at the beginning. Okay, so this is what happened. Now let me, let me show you what I have. Um, I can keep this, because why not? This works. But I created this cars controller this cars controller return a list of cars that I already have loaded with a name, a description, an image URL with the image, of course, and the color. So I want to get these cars and add the gallery items using a for each. So let me go to app. Let me wire those cars, of course. And let me get the method, get cars. Awesome. And I'm going to wire that method into the property cars. Cool. So I'm getting the cars from Apex. Now I will change my application to render those cars. So let's delete these gallery items. We don't need them. And now let me have a template with a for each car data for item, car, and now I have the gallery item. So this gallery item obviously we need the key so it's going to be car.id. Then we have the name. Uh, let's use the title API for adding the name. Then we have the alt property. Let's use the car description. And last, we have the source. Let's use the car image URL. Okay. And if we have an error for some reason, we can, we can show an error. Why not? So let's see if we have an error. Um, LWC if Cars error. This is cars, not car. It's cars error. Template. We will use my notification message.
that will return that error. Just in case. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. This should work because of course my gallery component is the best. So this should work. But that's what I thought, and the reality was totally different. So remember that with the gallery component, I was doing some DOM manipulation to be able to replace the first image. Well, that's where it fails. So when I refreshed this, I became so sad because it didn't work. For some reason, it says uh, there is no items to display. Even though I'm reading the cars, when I go to my gallery component and I query for the gallery items, those items don't exist on the first rendering on my component. And you see what I'm doing here. On the first rendering, I am marking this as render, and then I forget about it. I will not execute render at callback again. Why is that? Because the components are happening after rendering on this for each. So on this for each, they are adding components dynamically, but the gallery already rendered. So I'm missing a great opportunity here. So I was thinking, how can I fix this? Well, using events, I can have an event on the gallery item that notifies the gallery that a new image has been added. So that's a good way to, to solve the situation. So let me go and, and implement that. Okay, so let me go and implement that let's go back to full screen and how can we implement this let me go to the gallery item so what i want to do here on gallery item is on the connected callback i don't need the rendered callback here i need the connected callback i already know that my component exists i will create an event And this event will notify that a new image has been added. Custom event. This is called image added. And this um, event will bubble. these events with bubble and let me dispatch it. So now I am notifying my gallery that I have a new image. So then I need to, on the gallery, listen for that event. So I'm on the gallery. And here in the gallery, I will listen for that on image added and will execute handle image added. And let's implement that handle image added in the gallery component here. So handle image added. I have the event. And now I will add to the items list the component that is emitting that event. In this case, it's going to be that specific gallery item. That's the first change. Second, I will need to change uh, the gallery, the rendered callback. 
Let me see. Let me see if we need to change that. Uh, so far, I think we can keep it that way. Okay, I'm adding the items. And let me... Yeah, no, we need to change this. We definitely need, need to change this. What I'm going to do here is pretty much when I have a, at least one item. So if I have at least one item. Go ahead and update. I need to update the current item. So show the first one and then mark this as render. Render equals true. So what I'm doing is I am getting the images from the child using events and then I am making sure that I have eaten it items to show and when I'm showing those items, I am updating the view and then I am marking the component as rendered so I don't get into any uh, into any loop. Okay, it seems I have an issue, Santanu, uh, line number 15, card. It should be car. Ha. Huh. Line 15 where? In... Oh, yes. Awesome. Thank you very much. Good, good eye. Thank you very much. Wow. Yes, live coding. Live coding always happens. Okay, let me redeploy with that great change. Thank you very much. And let's see what happens. We, we should have the image. Uh, we should see now the new cars coming from the Apex controller. Let me refresh. And if everything goes good, it works. So we have a car, we have the navigation, so it's changing the different cars. I have the external navigation. So I now can change the the name of my gallery instead of nature images. It's uh, cars. Beautiful. So I'm able to send events from children to the parent. And now I'm using events just to implement my gallery on a better way. Now, every time a new child is added, I will notify my parent. I will notify the gallery. A, you can render. You can add me to the list. And that's pretty much what I wanted to show. And we learn how to bubble up uh, events. We learn how to uh, improve the component we created on the, on the last week. And we learn about the shadow root boundaries. What's next? So far, we can communicate, and let me go back to my face here. So, so far, we can communicate from the parent to the child, and from the child to the parent. From the parent to the child using properties, from the child to the parent using events. But how can I communicate between components that are not related? That's a very good question. And that's where Lightning Messaging Service comes into play. LMS, Lightning Message Service. Sorry, yeah, that's it. So with LMS, we will be able to submit messages and receive messages between components using a pop sub mechanism. Similar to the EMP API that we saw that used platform events or used um, CDC events to get data, these messages are just specifically between lining components. 
So what we need to do first is create a channel. So we will need to create a channel or an event, pretty much, where we will be able to publish information or subscribe to receive information. So getting back to Zoom here, if you go to the documentation um, with communicate with events, there is a section called communicate across the DOM. And this is where it teaches how to use the lightning message service. To use the Lightning Mesa service, we need to create a new metadata type. And that metadata type is of type message channel. If I am not wrong, I think I already created that. Yes. So this is what I did. I did this off camera to uh, save some time. I created a folder called message channels, and I created a new metadata type called course selected. And then I added the type, which is message, message channel, and this is how it looks like. Where I got this? From the documentation. In the documentation, you have access to the different fields, and you have access to examples, okay? So this is a car selected event or a car selected message. And that message has fields. So it will have a payload. In that payload, I will submit the record ID. So what I want to do is when I click a car, I can load that car somewhere else in my application. For that, I created also, besides this uh, message, I created another component and you can see that I confuse the terms a lot, car and card. Well, I created a component called car card. So car card, <laughs> I love this name. It's pretty much a lightning card that shows the card information, the name, the URL, and the description. And if I don't have any card to display, pretty much shows a message. And that component, uses the get record a get field value from the LWC UI API that we already saw on previous episodes to load that card information. What we need to get is just the record ID. So I have a wire here, and when I get the record ID, I will be able to load the car. But how I am going to get that record ID? Using LMS. I will need to submit that record ID from my gallery component to my, um, from my gallery item component, sorry, to my car card component. So first let's add this car card into uh, my, my screen. So let me edit this page. And you can see that the car card component is just going to be on a different place. It's not going to be part of the same root of, or, or, the, or even the same container. It's not going to be part of the application. So I have the car card. I'm moving the car card here on top of the assistant. And I don't have any car to display. Wow. Now it is time to perform the or they implement the message. So we have two steps. First step is going to be publish the message. So from the component that has the card information, I'm going to publish a message. And then we will need to subscribe to get that message on the component that receives that record ID. Santanu has a question. Just a request, upcoming weeks, can you cover two sessions? One is the breadcrumb in the community portal, and second, platform catch. We all talk platform events, but never about platform catch. Love it. Love that platform catch one. 
The first one you ask, the community portal, the breadcrumb bean, uh, I don't know about it. I will need to learn, to be honest. But definitely we can cover platform catch. Great suggestion. Thank you very much. Okay. Now let's change things a little bit. What I want to do is click my car and submit that record ID to the car card component that I have here. So first I will need to turn this card item into something that I can click. Let's change that. So how can I change this? Uh, let me confirm. Okay, how can I change this? Let me go to gallery item. Not gallery, gallery item. Where are you? Gallery item. Yes, you are here. And let's wrap all of these into a link. Why not? This link is not going anywhere. And when I'm clicking this, let me handle the click. So this component is going to handle click internally, okay? Handle click. Now let's go to gallery item and create that handle click method. And it will receive an event. Another thing about events, in this case, the onClick event from a link, from an anchor element, has a specific, uh, a specific behavior. So if I deploy this, and let me show you, it, it is better if we see what happens. It is better if we see what happens. So if I deploy this, and I click to that car, the screen will refresh and we don't want that. We don't want any refresh. Why it will refresh? Because that's how links work. They are going to open a new URL. In this case, I'm adding this uh, pound sign or the hash sign. But, but when I click, you see that it refresh and I don't, I don't want this. I don't want this event to behave as, as a tool. So to prevent that, I will execute prevent default on my event. I am telling my event, hey, stop propagating, stop doing what you know to do and let me do my thing. So here I am stopping that refresh. Second, I will need to submit my, my record ID to the car selected channel. For that, we will use uh, LMS. So let me import the things that we need from LMS. We will need the message context and we will need the publish method from the Lightning Message Service module. And then we need to import the car selected channel from lightning message service and we have an, an API name for this uh, metadata type is car selected and even though this is not a custom object, we will need to have the, the C prefix here. So we have the car selected channel and the message service. Then what we will do is to wire the message context. We always need to do this, like to configure the message context so we can submit messages. So let me wire that message context into the message 
context property. Context property. Beautiful. And then what I need to do is uh, publish the message. So let me publish a message. The message is going to be published using that message context that I just wired up to the car selected channel. And I need to submit a payload. So, or, or the message. And what is that message? Is going to be the record ID. But I don't have a record ID to submit. I don't have a record ID. So let's create a new API. Record ID. record ID, and then when I'm creating the gallery items here in gallery, I will pass that record ID because I have it. No, it is on the app, sorry. I have that record ID. Yes, so let me set up the record ID. So now I have the data I wanna submit to the other component. So what I'm doing here is every time I click, I publish this record ID to that channel, but then I will need to listen or to subscribe to receive that record ID. So we are going to do something very similar on the car card component, something very similar. Let me, let me even uh, copy paste a little bit so I simplify uh, things here. Let me format so we add the semicolons and everything. Let me copy this. Let me paste here. But instead of publish, I need subscribe. Let me also copy the wire. I'm going to be wired up the message context. No, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to copy this. And I'm doing the copy paste the game because uh, my computer is getting slow a little bit. Okay. So now let me create a method to subscribe to the, to subscribe to the channel. So this method subscribe to channel. This subscribe to channel is going to be executed on the connected callback uh, lifecycle method. And then I need to have a subscription object. Let me create a subscription object to handle that, that subscription. Beautiful, so this is this. So this subscription object, it's equals to subscribe. So we have the subscribe method from LMS and it receives as the first argument, the, me the message context that we already wired up Right? The second is the channel, the channel I'm going to subscribe. And third is a callback. 
So callback, let's get this message as a callback. This could be an anonymous function. Remember, we saw callbacks on our master in asynchronous JavaScript episode. And from that message, I have access to the record IV. I get that from the message. This is the payload, what I'm receiving. Record ID. So I'm subscribing, and every time I receive a new message, I am setting up the record ID, and when I have the record ID, the wire gets updated, and I get my card information. And when I have my card information, my uh, component gets rendered. And last but not least, let me execute that subscription on the connected callback. Subscribe to channel. If everything is good, we will get these two components to communicate. And right now I am only sending the ID, but you can submit more data. I am sending the ID because I can like also query the data from my database or from Salesforce. But if you need to submit other piece of information between components, you can define the lining field on the metadata type. Remember the lining field on the metadata type and you can add that field on the uh, payload. We have questions from Ashis. Any code lives planned on LWC JS testing? Yes. Not, not currently, I don't have them yet, but I have plans to cover tests. And I can make an online stream like TikTok. We also have like some shorts in, in our YouTube channel. Uh, but but TikTok, I haven't, I haven't thought about TikTok. Okay. I, it's not message service, it's message channel. I'm getting the metadata from a different place. Is message channel. And let me update the gallery item. I got an error. Quality item is message channel. So I'm getting the metadata and it's not lining. It is from Salesforce. So the channel, you get it from Salesforce. You get the metadata, which is the message channel. Yeah, I added something totally different here. And I cannot import soups. Okay, let me redeploy. Now it should be good. Hey, I, good to have you here. I was missing you. I said to myself, hey, where is Ike? He usually comes early. Well, let me deploy and see if it works. If it works, I'm going to be super happy. Let me go back to my camera okay deploying and refresh okay crossing fingers so if it works when i click on a car i will see the car information on the right on that lining card component that i have created ah Look, our Salesforce developer moderator knows more than me. I don't know anything. But call me in. I would be more than happy to, to do some TikToks. Okay, let's click. And there you go. We got the record ID from the card that I have selected here. And if I click, I'm going to send that ID and my car is updated. And that's how you communicate between components using Lightning Message Service. And that's also how you communicate with events between components. That's what I had for you today. Thank you very much for joining me. Remember 
that. We have this YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, to click on the notification bell so you always know when we go live or when we uh, pretty much uh, publish any video for you. Thank you, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you learn a lot and I will be pushing this code to the repository so you have the updated uh, code and see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Oh,